Hey guys, welcome to another New World video. In today's video, I want to continue with the Back to Basics Fresh Start series. And in this one, I wanted to have a look at territory standing. This one, I get questions about frequently, and with Fresh Start coming, I wanted to get it made. Because there are some little tricks you will want to do early that can't be done later on. Because as you know, there is not any way yet to respec your territory standing perks. So it is important you don't waste valuable selections early on for short-term goals. So, let's just get into it. So first, what is territory standing and why is it so important? Well, territory standing basically is this game's version of reputation. When you do anything, craft, kill monsters, quest, just about anything, you will gain territory standing in the region in which you did the activity. The first reason it'll be important to you will be so you can buy a home. But then, of course, have access to higher tier homes later. But there is a lot more to it than just that. As you gather more reputation, you will level your standing in that region. This will then unlock perk cards that you will be offered at each level as you progress. Although at each level, you will be offered multiple potential perk cards and you will have to select between them. The unfortunate part here is that you can't respec. So your standing choices are permanent. So making the right choices can be important. However, it is not so dire. Making the wrong ones won't ruin your character or anything so crazy. However, if you want to completely maximize your character's potential, then you will want to go into this with some thought and care. The cards you are offered are not random, they are predetermined. I have included a link in the description to a chart on New World Database, this way you can get a better idea of what you will be wanting when. However, in this guide I will share with you some reasons for certain choices as well as some smart choices early on, so later you will be in a much better place going forward. So first, let's look at what your potential options will be. Standing Gain Boost This increases the amount of territory reputation you gain while doing anything in a region. Experience Gain Boost this is only character experience, not crafting or gathering. Storage space increase. This increases the maximum storage available in the town storage of the region that you select this card. Gather speed. This is the speed that you can gather anything, mining, harvesting, gathering trees, whatever. There is some evidence also that this is still affecting yield, but this isn't completely confirmed. It did at release and was fixed, but recently it seems to be doing it again. Faction Token Boost. This increases the amount of faction tokens you receive when completing faction-related activities in a region. House Items Limit Increase. This increases the limit of items you can have on display in your home. Trading Tax Reduction. This decreases the amount that you pay in taxes when selling items on the market to other players in the zone or purchasing them. Crafting and Refining Station Tax Reduction. When you craft or refine anything at a station, you will be charged a fee. This bonus reduces that fee. House tax reduction. This reduces the amount you pay each week on your home. And home ownership. This of course allows you to buy a house in this region. So as you can see, these bonuses are not all created equal. Some are much more beneficial than others, and some are traps that appear beneficial but are not because you won't always be leveling. There are also some other factors to consider. First being some changes to the game over the past few months. Most importantly, housing tax. This used to be at one time very important because houses were very expensive. This has changed, and now your housing tax you pay each week is almost nothing. So having this reduced by a small percent won't make any sort of noticeable difference. Another important thing to keep in mind is most cards have diminishing returns on their bonuses. This means that the bonuses you get from an extra card will always be lower than the previous bonus of the same card. Standing gain, gather, faction tokens, trading tax, station tax, and property tax cards all start at 5% bonus, and each new pick will be 13.5% lower value than the previous one. The experience cards start at 3%, and each new pick will be 10% lower value than the previous one. And that leads us to something very important. The experience gain cards are a trap. The reason I say this is because it may be nice to get a bit of bonus experience while you're leveling. However, the truth is leveling is a small part of your time in Eternum. And after you've reached level 60, it's a dead perk and a wasted choice. So I would only recommend picking experience gain once for your first choice at level 1. This way, you get one experience perk with 3%. Then I wouldn't go any further. So now that we know this, what should your card choices look like? Well, they will vary based on how you play a little, but not a whole lot. So knowing all of these things, here's what I would recommend. This is the upgrade priority for your region with your homes in it. Storage is of course the most important, followed closely by house items. Then faction tokens, gather speed, standing gain, station fee, trading tax, property tax, all kind of go together, but in that importance order. They all kind of are at the same level and should be upgraded evenly. But then experience gain, only level this once at level 1. And now the upgrade priority for a territory where you don't plan on having a home. Again, storage is always going to be your most important choice. Followed by faction tokens, gather speed, standing gain, station fee, trading tax, property tax, and experience gain again, only one. One thing I would recommend is to focus a little more on standing gain early. This will help you gain standing more quickly. 
Then in the later levels, stop placing anything there to avoid negative returns and branch out into other focus. Ideally, eventually what you will want will look something like this. Faction tokens around 36 points go into that. Gather speed around 36. House items 20. Standing gain 36 or 35. Station fee 36. Storage 64. Trading tax 36. And of course experience gain 1. Beyond this, feel free to place the remaining wherever you please. But after these thresholds, you will start to see heavy negative returns. So now that we know what's important and why, let's have a look at how we level our standing quickly. Of course, your standing levels naturally through playing. But once you gain a few levels, you will start to notice it slows down to a crawl. At this point, you're going to want to start making it go up. By doing things, naturally just won't cut it at this point. The first thing I want to mention is that the very first thing you should do before starting any of these activities to grind your territory standing is either find a musician or play a song yourself to get the territory triumph buff. This buff will increase all territory standing gain by 10 to 30 percent for 30 to 90 minutes depending on the skill of the musician who plays the song. So having this buff will make a huge difference in the cost and speed of your territory standing gains. Now that we have this buff, let's get into the grinding. So first, they have added a new system to the game with the July patch. This is craftable territory standing in the form of supply crates. You will craft these at your stone cutting table using various materials and they can be crafted in different tiers offering different amounts of experience. The amounts you get range from 560 territory standing for the lowest tier to 5280 for the highest, which may at first seem good. But I do not advise using this method. The materials required to make these are very expensive, and you can easily produce much more standing for much less using other methods. I simply wanted you to be aware of these in case they ever tone down the required materials. Next up, we have using wicker baskets. This is a great way to get standing. Each wicker basket you craft will give you 61 territory standing. Now, that doesn't sound like much, but considering the cost to make one of these is 35 reeds, 25 fiber, and 1 solvent, this definitely is an inexpensive way to grind out your standing. The cost to craft 100 wicker baskets is far less than the cost of one tier 5 standing crate, and gives more standing for your effort. Not to mention, you can then salvage the baskets for some of the reeds to make more baskets. Another very good way to grind your territory standing is by making infused alcast. This is a bit more expensive, but provides much more territory standing for investment. For one Azoth water, one water, and ten Hyssop, you can get 36 standing. And then you can also, after making these, turn around and again use the Alkahest to make potions, regen, health, mana, whichever you need, or are selling best, providing you with another 12 territory standing per craft. This can be a great way to level standing, because not only is it producing standing, it is also making you coin, which you can then use to flip back into creating endless loop of territory standing. And finally, in my opinion, the best way to generate territory standing quickly and cheaply, and that is cooking. Cooking is by far the most efficient way to power level standing. The materials are easy to farm and cheap to buy. You can craft the rations at your camp, and your camp can be anywhere in the territory. It doesn't have to be near a town. This is my favorite way hands down to grind up territory standing quickly. Okay guys, that's about all there is to say about territory standing, and I do hope this answers all of the questions I have been getting from newer players. The most important thing to take away from this would be, do not buy the experience perks. They are a waste. Think more long term. And yes, territory standing is very important to level. Anyway guys, that's all for today. And as always guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.